Let's first put the do not disturb mode on my mobile and then also keep the computer quiet. Yeah. Hi everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Moran and this is the place where I usually share my crochet object knitting journey mixed with everything that brings me joy and keeps me inspired. Recently, this has been the place where I share my personal update as a maker from Israel during the war days. Today is Wednesday, November 1st, and it's 11.30 in the morning. And I am, I really hope it, we can have the time to uh, have a short update and also for some, uh, I want to share some of my makings, everything that keeps me sane during the last week. Uh, as like with my previous episodes, I don't have any notes and I didn't make any preparations. I do not have the time for it, for it so it will be a raw episode, no time for editing or something, anything like that. Uh, I think that we are mostly busy keeping ourselves in like a sort of a war routine. Sounds crazy and it is crazy. But we, as I'm recording this video, my boys are homeschooling via Zoom. Uh, yesterday, both of them went to school, but today they learn from they learn from home via Zoom. Uh, both of them. Um, I think schools are not in all the areas of Israel, but um, in some places uh, we can send. If you, if you want, you can send your kid to school, but they keep it like part of the classes will be coming to school physically and part of the classes will work via Zoom in the same day because they want to keep, um, I think, a reason, reasonable number of people to put in the shelter if there is, uh, if needed and also they all they only use the classes next to the shelter place so not classes that you have to go downstairs or upstairs to the shelter or something like that Eyal also works um, from the office today but he he go more to the office but he comes um, earlier before the sunset because it's not very nice to be uh, not to be outside in the dark, but also we don't feel like being here alone without him in the dark hours. Uh, Maya works from home, partially from home, partially from the office. She tried to go to live in her roommate's apartment, but she is going back and forth from our place to her place. So. We like manage it every day. She decide if she sleep with her roommates or she stay to sleep with us and she stay with us for the day. So this is uh, more or less from our um, kind of like war routine. Um, I think we mainly try to manage the constant uh, stressful news that are coming so naturally we are in a smartphone era so you even if you don't turn on the tv you get you get news anyway coming in coming through and it's very hard to control what the kids are seeing there are horrible videos and pictures coming through social media um, and we cannot control it so we are trying to keep like to be with um, in Hebrew you say with the finger on on the I don't know anyway we are trying to be very uh, aware of what the kids are seeing and to communicate with them about it I think managing stress is our main existing if I can say, uh, and yeah, the civilian solidarity is 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 
unbelievably huge. People are going to the, to the south, to, to the Gaza area to help uh, people that got, like, like, like our friends are picking up avocados today and milking cows in farms that got survived this, this, the brutal attack on the 7th of October. Um, a lot of uh, cow and farms got burned, got uh, killed, but we are trying to help each other with uh, um, the plants and the, the agriculture um, issues, not, 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 or besides taking care of the people that lost their homes. And yeah, I think we are not going to be the same community, the same society as we used to be before the 7th of October. Uh, and if I, if I keep it personally, I, I personally am not going to be the same person as I used to be before October 7th. That's for sure. All of us are not going to be the, the same people, but personally for me, I know that I'm dealing with I'm only starting to digest what happened to my community. There is no one family, one person in Israel that doesn't know uh, someone who lost a loved one or maybe a lot of loved ones and the way they lost the loved ones and kids that saw horrible things on October 7th on the brutal attack of Hamas. Uh, they will never be the same. We will never be the same. I personally will never be the same person as I was until October 7th. Um, yeah, so I think managing stressful, constantly stressful, constant stressful news uh, is 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 part of is the huge part in our lives every time that i record i say if we will have an a siren i hope i will uh, manage and i will remember to take you with me to this to, to to share this experience but i think it's not a clever idea i think uh i don't want to share the exact hour of siren coming to our area because it will serve someone that we don't want to serve. Uh, so, but I will share footage of, of, of a, a very close falling, a bomb falling next to our neighborhood um, that I managed to record. And sometimes while, uh, during the homeschooling, during the Zoom, school Zoom, hours we have sirens and we all um, hurry up to put the shoes on and to go to the staircase to the shelter if we are here in our apartment i think i i still as i said on my previous videos i still am very thankful for having my creativity i get a lot of comfort with my hooks and needles uh, preparing food for my kids, spending time with my kids. I feel very thankful for being here, sharing this content with you. I've, I'm very thankful for having my home. I've, I'm very thankful for having my kids with me uh, and constantly thinking about the families, the mothers, the fathers, the sisters, brothers, the families that, that their loved ones are in hostage, kept hostage by Hamas. I don't want to, to, to think of the mothers and the fathers, but I constantly think about it. I can hardly have um, a full night of sleeping. This is in my head constantly, 24 seven. I cannot stop thinking about these families and I feel like each one of the hostages is a member of my family. And I feel 
I don't think I have the words to express my feelings, but I think if I feel that way, what is the mother feel? What does the mother feel? What does the father feel these days? Uh, the relatives, the, the grandchildren. Uh, we had good news for a second this week with um, one of the hostages being brought back by our soldiers from the tunnels in Gaza. Uh, yeah, and it was, I think, one light after 24 days of war, uh, one light in the darkness. Although I have to say that the civilian solidarity and the giving wave is, is, is a huge light uh, for us these days. Yeah, I think being a knitter and crocheter is is a very helpful thing in, in these days. I am very, very thankful for your uh, reactions for, um, for the bunny, the Bono bunny that I uh, published last week. I'm very thankful for your, um, all your purchases. I published it on my Etsy and Ravelry stores uh, as a charity pattern. Uh, I think I will, um, we will make up our minds on where are we going to pass the charity money to uh, Brothers in Arms, the, the donation organization that we are going to, to donate money, to donate the profits from Bonobani pattern. But I will, uh, whenever we do that, I will share all the details with you. Uh, anyway, I think we have like something like 60 purchases on Etsy and maybe more than 20 on Ravelry and all the profits from your purchases, uh, purchasing this pattern will be donated to Brothers in Arms. So thank you so much for your nice reactions and I know many of you wrote to me. Uh, also, thank you for your heartwarming words. We are, um, I keep on reading them to my family. Uh, we are there very thankful for you. Um, a few of you asked, or I think more than a few of you asked, how you can, um, if you can send me the bunny and uh, so I can send them to the little ones that were survived this brutal attack. Uh, so I'm not sure yet how to manage this. And I have to say, we have quite a stressful days, uh, stressful lifestyle anyway, these days. So I am not very in a place that I can think of such an operation of like going to the post, picking up your bunnies and then pass them to the, the, the little ones. Uh, we have, I got, when, when I published this uh, charity pattern on social media, I got two people connected me, contacted me, uh, telling me, uh, giving me numbers of people uh, that I can get reach to to pass our bono bunnies to them and they will pass them to the little ones that were survived the the attack so eventually when we have our bunnies made uh, i will call these people but at the moment i don't feel like i can i need to add extra stress to my life so maybe you have your own way how to pass your bunnies, but maybe just by crocheting a bunny, I think it's a mental like activity that can maybe, maybe uh, while crocheting it and thinking about a hostage or thinking about a kid, a baby that is there, or maybe a baby that survived and he's in Israel, but without parents, without his mom hugging him, Maybe this is the, the point. Maybe this is the way to, to give. Anyway, 
if you purchased the pattern thank you so much and your purchase all your profit all the profits from your purchases will be donated to brothers in arms yeah the bono bunny pattern is available in my etsy and in my ravelry stores i will link them down below in the description box for you um yeah i think i have some knitting and crochet to share with you which i hope to we will have the time to do it um, maybe i will start with finished with a finished object so this week i was able to finish and block my third pair of lila sock the lila sock pattern is a new pattern that i'm about to publish and this is the third the third pair that i finish um all the three pairs that i made uh, of my lila sock pattern i used uh, the same yarn as the recommended yarn in my pattern this is the Aweta by Phil Colana and now I have three of them made yeah and I really really hope to be able to share this pattern soon um, we are not having like normal life at the moment but I try to I think I might take pictures out of this color because I really really like this color and maybe I can share the pattern soon we shall see anyway this is the the yarn I used for my third pair it's a Weta color 977 I used 2.25 millimeter short circular 9 inch so short circular uh, and for for the heel flap and for the toe i changed to knit on a magic loop so this pattern has a little bit of like lace diamond lace shape in the cuff section and then it works as a plain vanilla uh, sock so hopefully i will be publishing it soon i do have two more pairs of socks I think I shared them before but very very briefly but these are going to go out soon so I thought maybe I can share them before they go out uh, these are made these are just plain vanilla socks both are made with uh, socks yarns that I purchased uh, on our visit to Austria uh, these are made with um two colors of my row one subscription i'm not sure uh, of which month and with the lime green is by aweta by phil colana and most of the socks are made by i think it's a regia i'm not sure but i think so anyway it's a two by two rib cuff and i change colors every seventh round and on the first round of the new color i only knit so i don't um, do the knit one pearl knit to pearl two i only knit on the first round and this gives me like a sharp changing line between the colors then i made a contrast heel with the same aweta lime green and a contrast toe so these are going to go out for a friend who lives in Amsterdam and in this pair I followed my chestnut sock pattern you start by crocheting the rib section and then you crochet the leg section regularly and when you are done with the leg you turn the work inside out so all the pearl bumps are facing out and then you just continue working a plain vanilla sock so in terms of finished objects i have um, three socks pair of, pairs of socks made
So yeah, I had to I had to turn off the video and I'm here again and now I'm here again. So next is a work in progress, is a crochet work in progress. I think you remember my solid squares. I'm working on a solid square throw, a granny square, crochet granny square throw for our bed. Uh, I want it to be like a summer throw for Eyal and myself's bed. Uh, so I follow the solid square tutorial, my solid square tutorial here on YouTube uh, for five rounds. On the sixth round, I make these popcorn stitches in the corner and then I go back to the solid square construction on the seventh um, round. I use Knitting for Olive Merino for this project. I had a few balls here in the studio, but I purchased a lot more balls when we visited Copenhagen uh, last month. Uh, so I have quite a few with me. So I keep on making squares. I use a three millimeter crochet hook. I keep all my finished squares here in my Nina bag. This is also a pattern that I have on my Etsy and Ravelry stores. Uh, but I keep in my escaping knitting bag, in this bag that I, every week I share with you my escaping knitting bag. I have it ready for me, so in case we have to go immediately to Eyal's mom's uh, place, because she has a safety room built in her building in her apartment. So in my escape knitting bag, I keep a small project bag by the wool barn, which I purchased many years ago, with balls of the wool and a crochet hook, so I am ready to go whenever I feel like making a square. Anyway, this week I made some progress on this um, blanket, uh, and I used a few of my mini um, row one subscription that I made uh, for the coziest memory blanket making. Uh, I use a few of the colors and added this little round of front post slip stitches on around the third round of, of the square. And I added a small detail of picot stitches in each corner. And I made a few of them using different colors from my row one subscription. And this is a very gentle, like very subtle detail added. I think this is a Rueta yarn that I added and this one I tried to use my granny kit cotton which is a four ply sport weight cotton. Anyway, I'm trying, like showing this to you, it's like oh, opening the, my sketchbook in front of you. It's more like I'm playing like, and I'm sketching my ideas. I think I really like it when I look at it, also showing it to you now, but I'm not sure if eventually it will come uh, into, make it into the actual throw. Anyway, I think I shared a few episodes ago, I made a little swatch, joining swatch, just to see how it works when the corners are meeting, four corners of four squares meet together. And I really, really like the way the corners look like. I really like this meeting point and I'm not sure but I might be incorporating this little detail into my blanket. I'm not sure yet but this is more like I don't know kind of you know sketching part of my creative journey in this throw making. So anyway I think I'm uh, because I knew I want to, I'm going to share it with you today. I uh, went on and count all my squares. So I have 43 squares made at the moment. 
uh, together with the joined one, so together with this joint piece. I'm not sure how big this draw is going to be, we shall see. Anyway, this is the Nina bag and it holds all the finished squares. Another work in progress that I wanted to share with you today. Do we have still have the time? Yeah. Um, so this project lives in my fringe supply bag. It's uh, a very old bag that I love. It's it's also lives inside my huge escaping knitting bag uh, these days, and it carries my raglan sweater. I'm not sure if you remember. I shared it a few episodes ago. Uh, I'm trying to make myself another raglan like this one. Uh, this is a simple basic raglan that I made I think four years ago. It's a self-drafted pattern. I don't um, follow any pattern but I uh, made it while um, I made it uh, following Elizabeth Zimmerman knitting without without tears book and also a blog post that explains everything about the raglan top-down raglan construction uh, in the fringe supply blog so i um, self-drafted this raglan and this is a staple in my wardrobe and i wanted to make one origin my original one is made out of my granny kit cotton in the jet color it's a four ply it's a four ply sport weight yarn and i wanted to make one with a less positive ease so in this one which is also a sport weight yarn but this time i'm using the lotus yarn lotus yarn by autumn wind which is 90% cotton and 10% cashmere and I'm using a 3.25 millimeter needles and somehow the gauge here is more than the gauge here and I have to recalculate everything. I, I don't follow a pattern but I do have all the notes written in the note app in my smartphone and so I follow the notes uh, and make recalculate all the stitches because I want to have less positive ease. Uh, but I also have to uh, take into consideration that the gauge uh, came out differently this time. So this week I separated body and sleeves. As you can see, I already started knitting the body and the sleeves are waiting here. And now I'm at the point where I want, I stop knitting the body because I want to knit the sleeves before I continue knitting the body uh, because I want to have the same puffy silhouette, the same puffy shape for the sleeves. But because I am not on the same gauge and the counting is different because I wanted it to be smaller a little bit, I'm afraid, like, I, I, I'm not sure if I have enough or maybe too much stitches on the sleeve at the moment so I thought I will stop knitting the body and start knitting the sleeve and see maybe I will have to rip out and uh, go back like to undo my knitting which is okay I'm easy with undoing my knitting sometimes you have to go back and to remake yeah I wish we could rip out things ha happened in reality as we could as we can do with our knitting. So this is another um, work in progress that I'm busy with. I'm very like, I want to, I try to give it some extra time because there is a, a, um, a wedding coming in Ayal's family on December, uh, which I hope will be happening because a lot of weddings are now being canceled because of the situation. I'm not sure what is going to be with this wedding, but I, I part uh, like I plan to have this kind of t-shirt, basic Raglan t-shirt for this wedding. Um, 
maybe only to have the option to have it for the wedding because the uh, anyway I, I want to get it done so I gave it a little bit more time uh, even though it's uh, it's 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 a black project and uh, it's not very easy to work on something um, black these days I, I don't know how to anyway yeah so this is a work in progress another work in progress I also have a new cast on from uh, last week uh, I think two days ago or maybe uh, maybe yesterday sorry I cast on um, this uh, new pair of socks on Monday one of the Monday ladies started to knit um, a pair of socks out of a pattern French pattern that she got on a craft exhibition in Paris uh, she purchased uh, wool and the lady there gave her a printed sock pattern in French and she started to work on it on Monday and I said the pattern looked quite nice and I said maybe I will start it with you so I think it was yesterday that I started my I use the Sunness Garn Sisu I'm not sure if you can hear the helicopter on top of us and it means that it might be that there's an urgent need to bring someone with a helicopter to get a treatment in the hospital. We live very close to a very big hospital here in Israel. So, yeah, it's this. It, it goes there. So you can hear helicopters comes from time to time. Anyway, I cast on a new pair of socks using a yarn I purchased in Copenhagen. It's the Sisu by Sunness Garn. It's 80% wool, 20% nylon, so it's a sock yarn. Uh, I cast on 64 stitches and I knit three by one rib, but it's a broken rib rib so it's three knit one pearl for three rounds and then for the fourth round you knit all the stitches so you can see this broken rib construction yeah so I have two of them 64 stitches on 9 inch circular needles 2.25 my go to needle size for socks and I'm using the Chiagu needles and these are linked in my Amazon storefront link down below in the description box if you like so this is a new custom uh, I'm busy with at the moment and they live in my socks uh, project bag also purchased in Copenhagen and also I keep here all sorts of like um, scissors and stitch markers and all my needles, socks needles case and uh, embroidery needles and this project bag carries a lot of like my knitting accessories or if you can call it. I think the last work in progress that I will share with you today will be my coziest memory blanket this week I made a lot of progress and I used a lot of my row one uh, wool my row one minis so at the moment I think I will have to stand to show it to you uh, on the last episode I was just about to finish the fifth row so I added this wool I think this is a sock wool, it's not from the row one. And this week I am working on the sixth row, so let's look at it. So the sixth row is starting up here. Yeah, and I added quite a lot of squares this week. 
I think this is the row one mini. This one is a wet yarn. Maybe this one is a row one as well. Yeah, and this is a mini that one of the neat night girls swap with me. So this is how it looks at the moment. I'm very happy with it. And I think I shared all the details about needles and how I, the, 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 the changes I made in the pattern, the way I knit it uh, in previous episodes for many times. So there is no need to repeat. But I spent quite a lot of time with this joyful work. I am very happy I have it in my life these days. It brings me so much joy to work on it. And more and more girls knitters here in the weekly groups are joining this joyful making and it makes it even nicer because we are starting to be the coziest memory blanket community here. We swap yarns, we take care of like each other, preparing yarns for each other because if you don't have enough scraps it's it's a problematic thing because you want to continue but you don't have enough yarns and uh, so we take care of each other, uh, preparing yarns for each other and even the girls that are not involved in this making, they are involved by thinking of us and preparing yarns that she has at home to to bring with her to the meeting so we can sh we can uh, use it so yeah i spent quite a lot of time with it and i'm very very happy with it, the way it comes out and this is the progress i made this week i have to say i spent a lot of time knitting Knitting helps me a lot, managing the stress, managing um, the sad news that constantly, constantly comes, constant, we have constant bad news streaming in and knitting is, so, so I find myself managing this stressful news with my hooks and needles. Yeah, so I think this is everything that I wanted to share with you today. I'm very, very thankful for you being here. Uh, I, I, I will totally understand if you, if you don't enjoy such a content, but this is what I have to share. Uh, I will respect if you don't want to see this kind of content. And if this is the case, I will meet you at, on the other side of the war, whenever it comes, hopefully. Um, but for now, this is what I have to share. I am very, very thankful for you being here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you are safe wherever you are. Um, yeah, and I hope you have your hands are busy making something pretty and making something that brings you joy. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for coming here and visiting me here. And I will see you on the next one. Bye.